Hello everyone, here I'll discuss the anatomy of lacrimal apathus. The topic includes the lacrimal gland, its features and uh, secretory motor pathway, external features of eye, boundaries of orbit and the parts of lacrimal apathus. Here are the external features of eye. So eyes are the organs of visual system. This is the left eye, this is the medial side, this is the lateral. This here you can see the upper and uh, lower eyelids which meets medially form this medial angle. This one meets laterally form this here, this is the lateral angle. Here in the medially inner will get a triangular area that is called the lacus lacrimalis. Lacus lacrimalis. Over that will get a reddish elevation that part is called the lacrimal carangle. Then in the center you can see this color area that is the iris. Center of the iris comes of this pupil. Then this white part that is the sclera. Here this is the cornea. So the sclera and this cornea forms the outer fibrous layer of the eyeball. Here the first figure that is the sagittal view. Here this is the anterior view of the eyeball. So this is the uh, eyeball here. So this uh, externally only one sixth of the eye can visible. Here is one sixth can visible externally. The remaining here this five sixth that is enclosed and protective in the bony canal that is the orbit. Also here this figure you can see this the iris this colored area this is the iris this is the center that is the back part that is the pupil this is the sclera in the supralateral of the orbit will get this lacrimal gland here this is the anterior you can see the upper and lower eyelids this is the sclera in the sagittal view here this is the upper eyelid lower eyelid so the inner of the eyelids and the sclera is lined by a thin transparent mucous membrane that is called the conjunctiva. The part of the conjunctiva which lies inner of this eyelids that is the palpebral conjunctiva which is closely adherent to the lids and this region is highly vascular. The part of the conjunctiva which lines the sclera that is the bulbar conjunctiva which is loosely attached to the sclera. Here. Here you can see this is the sclera here, this is the cornea, this forms the fibrous layer of the eyeball, outer fibrous layer. See here, this is the conjunctival sac where this uh, palpebral and this bulbar conjunctiva meet superiorly and inferiorly forms that part is the superior and inferior phonics. See here, this is the orbit bony orbit this uh, consists of this uh, eyeball and the associated structures so here this is the uh, upper and lower eyelid okay so the eyelid is uh, covered externally by this skin will be there then the subcutaneous tissue then next will get the muscle layer muscle fibers then deep to that will get a fibrous tissue that is the superior and inferior tarsal plates or the tarsus. This tarsal plates meets medially and forms a fibrous band. This one is the medial palpebral ligament and meets laterally and forms this lateral palpebral ligament. The medial palpebral ligament is attached to this lacrimal crust of this bone that is the maxilla. Then here this lateral palpebral ligament is attached to the tubercle of this bone that is the zygomatic bone okay here the orbit and its boundaries see this is the orbit okay it's the location of this eyeball and the associated structures so the spony parts are here first we'll identify the bones this is the maxilla here this one is the maxilla then this bone here this is the zygomatic bone. This one, this is the that is the spinoid bone, greater wing of the spinoid. This is the greater wing of the spinoid. Here I will get the lesser wing. 
this is the body of the sphenoid bone here medially this is medial this is lateral medially here we'll get this is the lacrimal bone this part is the ethamoid bone ethamoid here this is the frontal bone so this is the orbital surface of this frontal bone the, here also this boundaries of the orbit see the orbit this is the enlarged view so this is the uh, roof of the orbit this is the floor this is the lateral wall this is the medial wall here we'll get the nasal bone this is the medial wall then there is an apex which points posteriorly there you can see this optic canal then you can see the base which directs anteriorly there you can see the superior and inferior orbital margins then coming to this boundaries here the roof this uh, yellow color this bone that is the frontal bone so here this is the orbital part of the frontal bone then here this is the lesser wing of the spinoid spinoid is in that pink color then lateral wall here the this blue color sh shaded area that is the zygomatic bone here this purple color that shaded part is the maxilla here this green one that is the lacrimal bone here this orange one that is the ethamoid this is also the part of the spinoid so coming to this lateral wall boundaries there is the orbital surface of the zygomatic bone this one is the greater wing of the spinoid then here this is the zygomatic process of this frontal bone medially this is the frontal process of this uh, maxilla this is the lacrimal bone this is the ethamoid and this one is the body of the spinoid this forms the medial bone then floor you can see the orbital surface of this one zygomatic bone this is the maxilla then also here we'll get the orbital process of the palatine bone then apex which points posteriorly base which faces anteriorly here comes the lacrimal apparatus so this lacrimal apparatus includes this lacrimal gland okay secretions of this uh, lacrimal gland that is called the lacrimal fluid or the tear fluid which lubricates and protects this eyeball the lacrimal fluid gets drained into this lacrimal puncta lacrimal canalically lacrimal sac then to the nasolacrimal duct and opens into the inferior meatus of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity first we'll see about this lacrimal gland here so lacrimal gland locates in the suprolateral of this orbit you can see the part of this bony part orbit it comes of two parts this is almost almond shaped its uh, length is 2 cm this larger part superior that is the orbital part this lower smaller part that is the palpebral part then two parts are separated here it's a muscle can see this is the levator palpebrae superioris but in the laterally this orbital part is continuous here in this laterally the orbital part is continuous with this palpebral part like this in the middle you can see this the levator palpebrae superioris muscle this exocrine gland you can see this ducts are coming from this gland opens into this conjunctival sac so there are average of 12 uh, number of ducts are there eight is from the palpebral part four is from this orbital part then here also this is the suprolateral that get the lacrimal gland from there the lacrimal ducts comes and opens into this conjunctival sac here you can see this the lacrimal puncta which leads into this canal lacrimal canalically lacrimal sac and the nasolacrimal duct then this uh, 
so the secretions of this lacrimal gland that is the uh, lacrimal fluid or this one or the tear fluid so there are a lot of factors which helps in the drainage of lacrimal fluid from the lacrimal gland to the lacrimal sac okay first one that is the capillary action of the film of the fluid the second one that is the blinking of this eyelids okay when this uh, palpebral part of the orbicularis oculi muscle contracts blinking occurs this also helps in the inward turning of this lacrimal puncta inward turning of the puncta then additional to that there are some grooves there in this conjunctival sac and this inner of the eyelid okay which also helps in the drainage of this lacrimal fluid from this uh, lacrimal gland to this lacrimal sac okay here we can see here this is the lacrimal puncta this opening this aperture here from there this is the canaliculi these are the channels this is superior and inferior canaliculi are there the direction of the superior canaliculi see here it is upwards then downwards and medially inferior canaliculi this one is uh, downwards and horizontally which forms through here this is the lacrimal sac this uh, length of the lacrimal sac that is uh, 12 mm in the lacrimal canaliculi that is uh, length is uh, here lacrimal canaliculi length is 10 mm then this lacrimal sac here superiorly it is a blind sac inferiorly it continues as the sneso lacrimal duct the sneso lacrimal duct passes downwards backwards then laterally and opens into this inferior meatus of the lateral wall of this nasal cavity then length of this nasal lacrimal duct that is 18 mm it passes through a bony canal in this through this uh, lacrimal bone then through this uh, maxilla lacrimal bone and through this nasal concha inferior nasal concha you can see then here comes the secretory motor pathway so the blood supply of the lacrimal gland that is through the uh, lacrimal artery then nerve supply that is sensory that is through the lacrimal nerve and so parasympathetic that is through the secretory motor it is secretory motor to the gland okay which stimulates the secretion of the which stimulates the secretion from the uh, lacrimal gland so the secretory motor pathway consists of here there is a lacrimatory nucleus there here you can see here this is the sagittal view of the uh, brain stem this is the mid brain pons and medulla here you can see the superior salivary nucleus superior and lateral will get the lacrimatory nucleus lacrimatory nucleus then here this is the trunk of the facial nerve this is the geniculate ganglion so the geniculate ganglion is the sensory ganglion here you can see the pterygopaltine ganglion this is the parasympathetic ganglion associated with the trigeminal nerve you can see the divisions of the trigeminal nerve this is the ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular then here this is the lacrimal gland here this nerve this is the lacrimal nerve so the parasympathetic that is secretory motor to the gland which stimulates the secretion the uh, secretory motor pathway consists of here there is a preganglionic fibers from this lacrimatory nucleus to the sphenopalatine or the sterigopalatine ganglion from there the postganglionic fibers to the lacrimal nerve to the lacrimal gland here first here this the pons here will get the lacrimatory nucleus this is the preganglionic fibers through the uh, nervous intermedius this is the part of the facial nerve then to the trunk of the facial nerve 
then to this geniculate ganglion this is sensory ganglion of the facial nerve from there to the greater petrosal nerve that is the part of the facial nerve then great petro greater petrosal joins with this deep petrosal that is from this uh, sympathetic plexus around this uh, internal carotid artery from there the carotid plexus of the internal carotid artery from there the deep petrosal nerve comes it joins with this greater petrosal nerve from this nerve of the pterygoid canal and relate into the sphenopalatine ganglion then then the postganglionic fibers comes through this maxillary nerve then then this zygomatic nerve is a branch from this maxillary nerve then zygomatic nerve communicates with this lacrimal nerve that is a branch of the ophthalmic nerve so the ophthalmic and maxillary nerve that is from this trigeminal nerve then to this lacrimal gland so that is the secretor motor pathway which stimulates the secretion from this lacrimal gland here so that's all about this uh, lacrimal apparatus so this lacrimal apparatus consists of this lacrimal gland which secretes the lacrimal fluid or the tear fluid to this uh, conjunctival sac from there the fluid gets drained through this lacrimal puncta canaliculi and the lacrimal sac then nasolacrimal duct and opens into this inferior meatus of the nose this nasolacrimal duct is guarded by a valve that is called the hasnes valve here this is the hasnes valve that's all about the lacrimal apparatus hope you understood here come the question briefly describe the lacrimal apparatus about this lacrimal gland and their associated structures for the passage of this lacrimal fluid or the tear fluid to the inferior meatus of nose thank you